Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Exploring Bangkok via BTS SkyTrain here on Idea Studio, where we look at life in Bangkok through the lens of design. I'm Dana. I'm Kip. And today we're here at BTS Sai Lun. Sai Luan. So this is the second to last station in Samutprakan. So it's on the Sukhumvit line, all the way south of Bangkok. And it's a very local area, just like Keha. It is on a Klong. This neighborhood is sort of built out around it. And this is nowhere near as developed as you would find in Bangkok, right, babe? Yeah. Still no. empty land around. Yeah. Big land for rent. You we're, cannot find us in Bangkok. We're, we're literally standing on a bridge across from the train station, literally on Sukhumvit, with seven rye of land available to rent. Yes. Seven rye of land on Sukhumvit. That's how far outside the city we are. Now, have you ever been down this far, like no. into the station? No. No, it's a very local area, and I think we'll find some interesting things, just like we did at Keha. So, with that, trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, I think we should go out and explore. What do you think? <laughs> Let's go, guys. And as we start our tour around Sailua, I love to see bikes in use when possible. They're an amazing last mile solution to get to and from the BTS. These Thailand post boxes are beautiful. This one happens to be right next to a well-maintained motorcycle taxi stand, an other great last mile solution. And next to that was this tiny rustic looking spirit house situated next to some bushes. And much like the other stations at this end of the Sukhumvit line, the bridges over the Klang lead us to some diverse residential neighborhoods. This Klang is still a functioning part of this community, supporting transportation and commerce while also making for some fun B-roll. And just as it always has, life along the Klang persists for those who live here and for those of us who visit. However, as important as the Klang is, it's just a starting point. The livelihood of this Sai Luk community radiates out well beyond it. I love this design, mixing work and living space in a modular fashion. It's not every day you see someone on a quad in Bangkok. This is a masonry supply shop. They should be busy for a few years with all the building going on in this area. And my obsession with Thai phone booths continues. In this one, someone's left a Buddhist prayer flag. And with that, here we are at the temple, Wat Puta Pawanaram. This temple sits on a massive plot of land. I'll have a Google map link to its location down in the description. Go check out how big this site is. These main buildings are gorgeous and just completely vibrant. No matter how many different temples I visit, from the most ornate to the beautifully simple, they always blow me away. This is the classic bell tower you're gonna see at most temples here in Thailand. Behind the temple's garden, we stumbled upon some building materials there, storing up for something. There were more dogs on the temple grounds than I would normally be comfortable around, but they were pretty chill. This isn't just random junk stacked up. Thai Buddhists believe that when you break a religious statue, you shouldn't throw it away 
and they stack them at a tree in their local temple. This is the second gate at the temple. And one of the things that I've seen a lot at Thai temples is they tend to be used as a cut through for locals to get from one side of a neighborhood to another. We found this local food court on the way back from the temple and it also just happens to be the local laundromat. Jib was starving, so we popped in and she ordered a bowl of Rad Namu, which was amazing and a great deal at just 35 baht. The noodles were tender, the bowl was full of meat, and it was all joined together with delicious, thick broth. We came across more than a few lots that looked as though they had been recently demoed. And of course, a staple of local neighborhoods are these paths that cut between sections for foot and bike traffic. While walking around, I saw a local tailor shop. This uncle's a tailor or what's called a shang in Thailand. He makes custom clothing for locals or takes outsourced works from clothiers in Bangkok. But more importantly, he repairs garments. So if you have a hole, he can patch it. Hey guys, so we just finished at the shang shop, which was really cool and such a cool uncle to let me film him, film his shop. But what, what I love about that type of shop is that it, it's so centric to the community. And I love that in Thailand and Bangkok and most cities in Thailand, you can open up a shop in your house right on the sidewalk so people can walk right in, get service. And we even have a term for it here called shop house. And I think I'll do a whole video on the idea of shop house because in the US you don't really see that where people have a shop on the first floor then live above where they work where their business is but it's so integral to the type of economy and to the communities in Bangkok in Thailand in general and I, I love that concept I think it makes so much sense and that's one of the things that gives this city so much texture and vibrance and I love it and they're also able to open these shops that serve a local community and actually add value and create jobs sometimes so that that uncle that Chong told us that he used to have a few people working for him but obviously with the situation the last couple of years things have slowed down a bit but that may return who knows anyway i just want to talk about that style of small business in thailand and how that adds to the community and adds value and the fact that you can just open up a business on the front of your house in the city and again the idea of shop house is fantastic i think i'll do a whole video on shop houses because i think that's such a wonderful concept i wish we saw more of that in the u.s that you could have you know, right on the sidewalk a home business that someone could walk into, whether it's a, a grocery store or a tailor shop or whatever, a repair shop. Really great just to see that and enjoy that and such a beautiful part of what makes Thailand the greatest city in the world. Let's get back to the video. Unfortunately, the first thing that we see on the other side of the BTS station is a small garbage dump. And there's an old factory right next to the BTS station that's fallen apart and the roof is partially collapsed. The inside seems abandoned and just filled with junk. But it is for rent. However, Jib caught me looking at the sign and put a stop to that idea before it even formed. This cool, older wooden house is built on stilts to avoid flooding. It's common in this area and looks as though the second level was built much later than the first. I'm not sure what it is, but there's just something about this rusted sign that reminds me of Cleveland. I do like that yellow roof on the building behind it though. I can't lie, I saw this bike parked up against the wall with the boarded up windows and everything. 
and just wanted to grab a shot of it. I thought it would make a fun composition. About 20 meters down the road, I came across this rickshaw tucked away against the wall. And it looks as though it's been used more to haul goods instead of people, which is probably a great second life for it. Directly to the left is this apartment building with the bottom built of concrete and the top of wood. It's a very common design style in areas prone to flood. Directly in front of this apartment building, I see some chickens. And to be honest, I'm always surprised and a bit giddy when I see chickens running around an urban area. There's something just whimsical about it to me. This is a very Thai Chinese area. And as such, there's a lot of very cool Chinese shrines. But like R2-D2 and C-3PO on Tatooine, these are not the shrines we were looking for. This is a small clong that's fed directly from the Chow Prior River which is less than 100 meters away. Some more classic wooden buildings, really wooden shops with small rooms built on top for the shop owners. I love that this guy's out here getting it done on his rickshaw, hauling just whatever around. I love seeing people use bikes for this type of stuff. Remember this sketchy looking alley because we'll show you where this leads in a little bit. Now, this is the shrine we were looking for. We could actually see this from the other shrines about a kilometer away. This shrine has an awesome vibe to it. We we're the only ones there at the time, so it was really cool to have the whole place to ourselves. All of the rooms at the shrine were full of really cool art and statues. I love the way Chinese depict gods, generals, and revered individuals. It's just so badass. This shrine has a way to make merit, and it requires you to go in a specific order to different rooms and different statues at the temple. And because we were the only ones there, one of the caretakers for the shrine took the time to show Jib to each of the stations one at a time so she could make merit and walk through the process in the right order. I thought that was incredibly nice and really just a great experience for Jib to be able to go through the process and have someone guide her along the way. We did ask about seeing the statue on the roof and the shrine caretaker told us that it wasn't open yet because the building was still under construction. But there's no OSHA here. So they just let us go up on our own and told us which stairway to use because the other one isn't finished yet. The statue on top was amazing, truly massive. The video just doesn't do it justice. Do you remember that little alley I said to remember? Well, this is where it leads, this little community tucked away next to the shrine. 
You could easily see the cranes at the port on the Chao Praia and the houses built up next to it. And tugboats waiting in the river to be called for a job. Have you noticed this tower in the past few episodes? We'll get there eventually. See you at the next station. Thank you.